for listening to Back Talk, Successful Black Parenting Magazine, the podcast talk show for parents. I'm Janice Robinson Celeste, your host and publisher of Successful Black Parenting Magazine. Now, I want you to tell all of your friends and followers about the show. So go to our Facebook page for Successful Black Parenting and share the link with your followers right now, right now, and let people know you're joining us. Even better, you can click the options and start a watch party. If you go to our page in the three little dots in the top right hand corner, you can um, drop down a menu and you can start a watch party. In addition, you can comment on Facebook and I will post the best comments live on air and know that it can take a while for your questions to populate in the backstage area. So ask your questions early. Don't wait. Know that our hashtag for the show is Backtalk. Hashtag Backtalk. Today, we are talking with Andrea Stevenson about how to teach your toddler how to read and write so they can get a head start at school. Andrea taught her son how to do it, and now she's going to tell us. How are you, Andrea? I'm doing well. I just want to thank you so much for having me on your show. It's a pleasure. Thank you for being here. Well, let's just get down to it. Okay. okay. <laughs> how did you teach him how to read as a baby? How do you do that? Oh, wow. Okay. So that is a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> so what can you do maybe just tell you? Because <laughs> I, you know, okay, I used to get that. Step. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, step by step. So I used to get that question all the time when I would go to grocery stores with him, Um, even when he was, you know, one year old. So uh, he would read a sign, like you may say, Apple. And parents would ask me, is he really reading that? And, and I would say, yes. And they would ask me, how's he doing? And I was like, oh, gosh, I could sit down with you for one hour. But um, I, I did take it by step. So one thing that I did was I just wanted him. Well, let me just say this first. I, it wasn't my intention for him to learn how to read. My intention was for him to learn how to talk because I've always heard from professionals and family members that boys talk later than girls. So I didn't want him to experience that because in my work as a play therapist, kids who really can't talk, um, you know, they will result to hitting or biting just because they can't express their feelings, they can't express their wants and their needs. So I wanted him to learn how to talk. So the first thing that I did was I wanted to, to get him familiar with language. So when he was a baby, we, we would listen to songs. Um, we would listen to Pandora, toddler radio. I would pick him up and dance to the ABC songs um, before bedtime, even though he was, ever since he was a newborn, I would read to him. So I just wanted him to hear words. That was my thing. I wanted him to hear words. I wanted him to hear language. And um, the way that he can hear language. Mike, Gigi's was, uh, ringing the bell. Can you hear me? Hello? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, okay. can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. So um, I wanted him to hear words through songs and music, also with me reading. Sometimes we would take walks um, and I would describe the grass. I would describe the trees, the kids playing. So any way that I can teach him to, um, to hear words or even through play, if we were playing with something, I would describe like, what is the ball doing? The ball is rolling. And then um, we read a lot of ABC books. So when we, um, we read probably over 50 <laughs> And I wanted him to get a wow, different perspective 50. about um, the ABC. So I didn't want him to just read one type of ABC book. I wanted him to get a different perspective from different authors, um, from different characters. So it's not like he was reading one. And that way, the ABCs was presented to him in another way. Um, so with the ABCs, I would sing it to him. We would dance to ABC songs. We would listen to um, the ABCs in the car through audiobooks. And then after that, um, oh, I started doing the sounds. So... Um, once I would read a, an ABC book, we would go over the sounds. Like if, if the page said A is for apple, I'll say A, 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 apple, or A for A, A, A. So it was, I was teaching him, but my thing was I just wanted to expose him to it. So once his brain, um, I guess once his brain absorbed it, it would absorb it when his brain wanted to, if that makes sense. So my objective was not really to teach him, but to expose him to all these things. So um, through our play, we would build the ABCs and I would go over the sounds um, with with Legos, we'd build ABCs with uh, Play-Doh. Um, we would do ABCs on magnetic tiles, like the magnetic letters on the refrigerator. So he was just exposed to play. We would make ABCs outside with um, the uh, sidewalk chalk. I would draw it and he would draw pictures. So after that, he learned the sounds, then we would do the phonics. And then once I knew that he knew the phonics, we would blend sounds. So one day, um, it was his uh, first Christmas, 
And well, he was during this Christmas, I think he was 21 months. I, someone gave him some magnetic letters on the refrigerator. And um, I was like, you know what, let me just see if he can blend sound. So I put M-A-T and I knew that he knew the phonics. So I just said M at, M at, and then he said, oh, Matt. So then I just put B-A-T and then he was able to um, use the sounds and blend them. And he was familiar with doing that because when we would read, I would blend the sounds out as well when we would read. Um, so I was like, okay, if he could do this, you know, we, he could start maybe reading some three letter uh, words and maybe books with a lot of three letter words in it. So once we did that, I would read words and then I might say, if the, if the sentence said the ball is big, I would say the ball is, and I would see if he could sound out the word uh, big, B-I-G. So that's where we kind of started there. And then once he understood that he can sound out these words, then um, sometimes he would read two words out the sentence then three words out the sentence and then on his way to reading um, all of the sentence, if that makes sense. And that's actually how he learned sight words through reading. I didn't give him a list of words. And let me know if I'm going on too, too long here, sure. but it's a long answer. <laughs> um, no, that's so, a good loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and that's where he learned sight words. I know a lot of parents give their children um, a list of words, but I, in my opinion, I know it works, but in my opinion, you know, with someone as small as my son, it's just an isolated way to learn sight words. So I wanted him to be able to find meaning in the sight words. So if, if the ball is big, if he wants to know that the ball is big, you'd have to read the word the, you have to read the word is. So that's how... Um, he learned sight words through reading, and then we would take the magnetic letters and we would spell sentences like that. So he's touching the words, he's feeling the words, he's um, looking at the words, he's sounding out the words. So I just wanted him to experience um, what he was reading. Um, so also when he started to read, I wanted to incorporate some reading comprehension in there. So we would act out books. So if we're reading a, an alphabet book and a, you, you will find a lot of alphabet books that are based on animals um, or maybe food. So there's this one book called Alf Animal Animal Fabet. And so if S is for snakes, we would crawl around the room like we were a snake. <laughs> if um, B is for bear, we would you know, we would go around the room with our hands curled up, growling like a bear. So acting out books is a great way for reading comprehension. So again, he's experiencing the word, he's seeing the word, um, and he's uh, reading the word. So, and I, I think that the best way for a child to learn how to read is just through their whole body, through their, fi through their five senses, if you can. I know sometimes you can't smell something or uh, taste them. <laughs> but if definitely if you can have them hear the words, um, if they can touch the words, if they can feel the words and see the words, I think that's a great way um, for them to learn. So my thing is when you're teaching a child to read, you know, do it naturally. Um, hold it, hold sessions that are maybe not even 15 minutes long, 15 minutes or less if they want to go longer. Um, that's a great way to do it. And it's just going to happen naturally because if you get books based off of their interests, you act it out, you um, teach it through them to them through their whole body, then they'll have a desire to learn. I think that's the most important thing is just create a desire for them to learn, um, create a curiosity in them for them to learn. And one way to do that with young kids is is through play. So hopefully I answered okay. your question. <laughs> No, that, that's really great information for parents to know. And like you said, using every um, senses uh, that every sense you have, as well as um, being able to act it out and make it fun and playful. I think that's a full emergence. That's perfect for teaching toddlers. Now, did you surround him with books from birth? I mean, did he, is that something that he's always had around? Um, yes. Yeah, so I um, actually started reading to him when I was three months pregnant. And I'll tell you a story. So when I was uh, three months pregnant, I had a, a lesson with some old co-workers. And, you know, they knew that I had been planning. Um, I, was, I, was saying, I think I want to get pregnant within a year. So when it happened, we were all excited and we went out to lunch. And one of my co-workers, she goes, you know, you need to, really need to look at the Ben Carson special on brain health. And she was saying, you know, he was talking about the importance of reading to your child and interacting with your child. So children who are sung to, read to, um, interacted with, even as newborns, they tend to um, have more brain links or make connections more with their brain. And so when I watched that special, it was an hour long and it's available on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it. 
I was amazed at what I learned. Just the simple things that we can do as parents as far as touching our child, hugging them, um, reading to them, dancing with them, and also incorporating words while you're doing that, like describing um, what you're doing while doing that. Um, so I took that and as soon as I got off of work that day, I went to the library and I just checked out maybe five books and that night I started reading to my belly. <laughs> So, um, That's perfect. yeah, and the, the librarian was like, oh, well, uh, how's your child? I was like, well, <laughs> I'm just three months pregnant. So she's like, oh, wow, well, you're starting now. But it just got him used to hearing words while um, while I was pregnant. So once he was born, we did have books um, in the basement. Um, he has a little play area in our basement. So we kept it in the bin. And then on the second floor where we eat, sometimes I would keep uh, books in the middle of the table. So mm -hmm. After he has finished eating, he could grab a book if he wanted to. And then also on the second floor, we have a bookshelf. And then um, on the third floor in his room, he also has a bookshelf. So I think that's a great way to make your home literacy rich, um, just by having books around. And then other ways um, you can make your home literacy rich is, you know, have um, a dry erase board. Maybe write down your dinner menu or your lunch menu, your breakfast menu. So they're seeing those words. Um, when you go into the grocery store, instead of putting it on your cell phone and notes, maybe write it down so they can see it. Um, so there's lots of ways um, to make the, your home literacy rich or even in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, you can have a, a book of um, ba a basket of books also in the library as well. So, but yeah, we right. did everywhere. <laughs> That, that's perfect. That, that is really perfect. I know my, my um, granddaughter, Mackie, um, I, I started taking care of her when she was one. Oh. And um, we um, basically, every time I got her dressed, anything, like just constantly talking to them, like you said, you know, and telling her, we're putting on your green shirt today. Yeah. Let's put on your blue pants. And, you know, even down to little things like reading, like she, at, early to was able to spell the word male and that I came by <laughs> accident because we would take walks in the neighborhood twice a day and on people's mailbox you know mailboxes outside is it has you know it was like a brass a lot of people had those brass mailboxes where you mm -hmm. push the mail through and on the little flap it says m-a-i-l and so she just started saying m-a-i-l and i said and she knew her letters and i said oh what do you sell mail? Where do you, where did you get that from? And then I saw she was reading the mailbox and I was like, right. perfect. But yes. I tell everyone never underestimate what a toddler can learn. Right? right. People think, Oh, they can't, they shouldn't be reading and writing and all this stuff until they get to school. No, 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 they can do it. And yeah. too, I've seen them do it. Yeah. And probably some people, some kids probably even do it younger that are really, really, really okay. brilliant. But right. like at two, she could spell mail. She could spell um, her name. Um, you know, so these are things that a toddler can easily do. Yeah. And we have not talked about that too much in, in you know, academics um, right. about how much they can actually learn. But go ahead. Right. Yeah. Um, I was going to say in the um, brain health special that I watched with Dr. Ben Carson, he talks about how a child's brain from the years of zero to three, they are absorbing so much information. And mm -hmm. by the time that they're the age of three, they their brains have grown 90 percent of what it's going to be for their lifetime. So that's exactly. an important time for them to start learning. And it's not anything where you have to push it on them. You, you, mm -hmm. You're not really teaching them. You're just exposing them to words. And because mm -hmm. they have curiosity at that young age, they're going to absorb the information. So if you like you did, you know, with the mailbox and, mm -hmm. you know, she saw all those letters she was interested in it and you know probably wanted to learn more about you know the mail so it's nothing that you're doing where you're pushing it on if you do it through play it'll make it fun and it'll increase their curiosity so right play and experiences also i know that when we take her to local places like um we took her to the train museum and mm -hmm. she knew the word you know locomotive um oh, wow. so this yeah, really. I, so when we just talk about things like that, but we break it down to her level. So right. when um, she had music class this week for the first time, the music teacher said, oh, we're going to sing a song about a locomotive. And she goes, that's a choo-choo train. You know, so she <laughs> understands, right. you know, so just have to break it down to the, their level. We learned about dinosaurs when she was barely two. And, you know, I did things, you know, I'm an early childhood specialist. So I did, uh, did things like 
when she woke up, I had made dinosaur footprints out of felt and just had them going from the staircase into her playroom area mm -hmm. so that she could follow the footprints. And we learned about dinosaurs and we had like a week long lesson. Now she loves dinosaurs. And mm -hmm. so these are kind of things like, even, and then we had the dinosaur books, you know, right. and grandma showed, mm -hmm. shared her favorite dinosaur book. So um, there's a lot of great books out there. And if you really want them to impress people, Dino Blocks, I'm going to recommend Dino Block book yeah. because okay. it has the real names of the dinosaurs and they will learn a good handful of them at least because they're difficult to say, but they have the pronunciation that makes it easy for the parents. So you don't feel silly trying to pronounce them, <laughs> right. but the kids get it. They get it. Like she'll tell you that's a stegosaurus. She's two. That's oh, a stegosaurus. That's, that's my favorite. Right. <laughs> you know, that's she'll say great. yeah. So. Yeah, so it's amazing what they can learn, what they can right. learn. Now, let me ask you, why was this so important to you that, you know, he was able to, to well, be able to do these things at this age or just just exposing him to this? Why was that important to you? Just talk to us about that. Um, a little bit. Well, like I said, I um, the reading part, I actually didn't think he would learn his ABCs until the age of uh, three or four. So. The reading wasn't really in my mind. It was just I, I wanted him to talk, <laughs> to be able to talk because I didn't want to get him to the point where, you know, he was frustrated and, you know, hitting mm -hmm. people. You know, I I had experienced that as a play therapist. So I just wanted him to be able to use words to communicate to me what he wanted. Um, but when I saw his joy of learning the alphabet, learning numbers, um, the joy of, you know, writing, I just kept going. I didn't listen to, you know, maybe what professionals say they shouldn't learn this until five or learn this until six. I kind of let him tell me what um, he wanted to learn and I just went with it. So um, when he was 16 months, he was able to identify his alphabet and we were in a nature center and a preschool teacher said, Oh my God, he's going to be bored in preschool. And I was like, Oh gosh, should I, for a brief moment, I was like, well, should I stop, you know, exposing him to all this? I was like, no, no, no. I'm, we're just going to go with it. And so once he, um, knew the alphabet. I was like, okay, well, let's do the phonics, you know? And so it was just like a natural way because he, you could tell that he had a desire to learn and I wasn't going to stop based off of what, you know, professionals say. I, I just kind of went with what he told me he wanted to learn. Um, so it, and then once he um, had that curiosity, once he wanted to learn, um, then the then that's when I kind of went on and say, okay, well, let's see if you could read this type of book. You know, we, we've done three letter word books. Let's go to four letter word books. Okay, well, let's go to kindergarten books. Let's go to first grade books. So I, I just didn't stop. I My thing is I want to stimulate his brain. So mm -hmm. my goal is not for him to be able to do algebra or, I mean, in multiplication, even though he can do multiplication now, um, my goal is not that. Yeah. My goal is, is for him to just to stimulate his brain so that, he will be able to fulfill whatever his purpose is in life, you know, his God gift abilities. So, you know, to prepare him for that. So I, um, as far as the reading, like I said, that was not my intention at first. I just basically wanted him to communicate with me and it just kind of went from there. That's great. Let me tell you something. According to this report online about kids count, only 14% of fourth grade African-American boys read proficiently. That's 14%. Oh, so what you're doing is remarkable and necessary. And, um, you know, our kids need to be able to read and write well to do well in their other courses, even math. Right. Um, I think the girls were about 18%, which is still not acceptable. But, right. you, you know, a lot are concentrating on the boys. But it sounds like a crisis, actually. To right. Me. Right. So, so I think what you're doing is perfect. Go ahead. No, oh, sorry. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if this is a trend or maybe this is something among um, some of the mommy friends that I have, but I have noticed that some of the mommy friends that I have, they'll read to their girls, but they'll forget to read to the boys, like if they have a, a boy and a girl. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just something among my friends or if that's just a trend between parents, um, maybe because girls can mm -hmm. sit longer, maybe, or I'm not sure. But I have seen that um, with at least four of my friends um, where, you know, they will definitely read to their girls. But they're like, oh, I didn't read to my boys or not as much. They didn't read as much to their boys. And maybe it's maybe it's the extra energy that boys have. I'm not sure. But that is one thing that I have noticed just among um, some of my friends and uh, circle. So. It's, it's funny you say that. I remember seeing a comment about, um, I think on one of my posts under my book where one of my friends said to get the book and she, she said that my son won't sit still to read the book. He'll just take the books and throw them. And so she gave up. And I'm like, don't give up. Act right. it out. Do whatever you got to do. It's yeah. so important to capture their attention 
Um, right. So you're, you might be on to something. And if you're listening to this or watching this, if you have a, a boy and a girl, especially, let us know if you reach a, the a girl more than the boy. And, you know, think about it for a minute, because I even had to think about it. Um, mm. You know, like with my grandchildren, like I haven't really had a chance to read to the boy um, as much because he's um he just he'll be one next uh, month. Okay. But um, I more so take care of the the girl's mom takes care of her. Uh, she takes care of both, but she okay. more so is there because he's young and he's nursing. So, um, but yeah, so I see what you're saying. So we have to also pay attention more to our boys because, like you said, they have so much energy. I do know that he loves books though, so I think we're on the right start. He has books, so we're ready. <laughs> which is okay. right. Um, but what, what are your, oh, go ahead. You was gonna oh, say, no, I, go was, ahead. I was going to say, um, <clears throat> like as far as reading from my experience, like I did start with my son as soon as he was born, like a newborn. So at night, you know, when mm -hmm. your child is waking up <laughs> in the middle of That's the night, important. um, mm -hmm. I would sing songs to him. Cause you know, I had to go to work the next day and I was, I was like, mm -hmm. in order for me to stop crying because I'm so tired, <laughs> maybe if I sing the mm -hmm. ABC songs or even like before he would go to bed, like around 730 or eight, you know, I would have a board book reading to him. You know, he was in my arms and just so, just so I can expose him to words, I would get books from the library, even though he was a newborn and just read it to him, even though he didn't know what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can mm -hmm. actually start reading to our kids, you know, when they're newborns, you know, and that way, once they're sitting up, um, I guess they start sitting up around five months, maybe six months, you know, they'll, they'll have it in their um, memory. Okay, we're supposed to read a book before bedtime and they'll be able to sit right. there. And yeah, because yeah. they're, they're used to it. It's like, okay, it's just a part of our schedule. It's just what we do. Okay, it's time to read before we go to bed, even as um, a little baby. So I do want to encourage parents to start reading as soon as they, I mean, I started doing it when I was pregnant, but as soon as they are a newborn that first day, you know, just start exposing them to words even though they can't even say it. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. I think that's really important. Um, let me ask you, what are some of your child's favorite books right now? Um, okay. So he is really, he's doing chapter books right now. Um, so he has this book from the library. It's called um, Turbo Cat that he really likes. Um, we read a book called The Takedown, which is about a boy who was um, doing some track and field events and he wasn't very good at it. <laughs> so he practiced and practiced. He was able to um, to actually win first place. Um, let's see. He likes books. But about did you say, books. hold on, did you say he's doing chapter books? Yeah, he can read chapter books. I actually have I a video. Sure I heard that right. How old is he? Uh, he's four, but he was able to read um, wow. <laughs> uh, Charlotte's Web as a three-year-old. I actually have mm -hmm. a video of on my website of him reading Charlotte's Web, a page of Charlotte's Web when he was three. Um, and the reason why wow. I read that one, because I knew there was a connection that could be made. I knew there was a movie that was connected to that um, mm -hmm. to that book. So I was like, well, if we read the book, maybe we can watch the movie. But he is into um, chapter books about space and Turbo Cat. And um, one book that he likes is Desmond Cole, Ghost Patrol. They that That's a, another chapter book. Well, the chapter book, it has to have pictures in it because um, I think he makes connections with right. the pictures. So um, that is one that he really likes with Desmond Cole, Ghost Patrol. So that's like his, his favorite series right now. So. Oh, wow. That is really <laughs> impressive. All okay. right. So I'm just going to take down a notch to my little board book, Tyler, because I have to do a plug for my book. <laughs> so okay. you guys who okay. are watching, if you know me, oops, you know that this is our book that's out. This is my first children's book that I've ever written. It's called Big Kid. It helps um, children to feel brave in a subtle way about the world. And it's, it's pretty simple. If you know Brown Bear, Brown Bear, that book, what do you see? It, the characters change, but the words are basically same. And this book kind of goes with that. I didn't do it that way on purpose, but I realized it after. And so the characters change. And some of the characters that are in the book are kids' favorite things like um, trucks. Mm -hmm. And my granddaughter loves trucks. So I put some, it's basically for her. She loves dinosaurs. So it talks oh, about like dinosaurs. It just goes on and says, you know, um, it's based on public speaking. So like, you know, when we go speak out in public, we pretend we're bigger than what we are. Or we do yeah. Superman pose and feel empowered. And that's what this book does. So I tried to include everything from trains, planes, all kinds of stuff that kids like that are big, that mm -hmm. they can empower themselves with, have the elephant. There's also wow. animation on YouTube on our ethnic animations YouTube pay, um, you know, page that goes oh, with wow. this. Um, yes. So you can see the animation for it next year. So guys, these are more books and things that your toddler can just, my toddler can read this book because only the character changes and you can see the character on the page. So she can read, as I put quotes, read 
well, where is it? I'm like the weatherman here. Read <laughs> this back to me. Um, here is the one that's coming out for next year. And this is totally crowdfunded. Miles Stuffy knows it's a board yeah. book as well about mm -hmm. how to blow your nose. And you guys help with this. If you uh, contributed, this will be out by May of next year. So look for my stuff, stuff he knows on Amazon, but you can definitely get Big Kid on Amazon and you just got to type in Big Kid, comma, Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E, and it'll come up. I love Because otherwise that. it doesn't come up and I don't know why it doesn't. But I needed to plug my book because I want to make sure it's successful so we, hello, so we can keep going since our name is Successful Black Parenting right. Magazine. We need right. to be successful too. Right. But and I, I think I did this. Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, I, I mean, just in connection with your book, I think it's important for especially African-American children to see themselves when they are reading. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> you know, I love that. And especially, you know, with your books, you know, with the blowing the nose, you know, that character, you know, looks like the child looks like your child and they're teaching them something and they can make more of a connection to it. And also it has cars like my son loves cars. He loves trucks. So if he sees mm -hmm. that, he sees someone that looks like him, you know, they'll make more of a connection with the book and want to read as well. So um, I think that's great. That's great. You took the words right out of my mouth. That's just what I was about to say. And it encourages them to read more when they see characters that look like themselves. I know the people listening can't see this, but all the characters here for my books are African-American children. And um, these books can hold their own on a shelf with bigger publishers. That's why I made sure that all the, the uh, illustrations were um, professional as they could possibly, possibly be. And that when you see this book on a shelf, that you can't tell if it's from a small publisher or a big publisher. I wanted to make sure that. So I sent the money on my, my own pocket for the first one to make sure that um, that happened. But I want you guys to, or I just want to encourage you, Amazon.com, big kid. And then you have to put comma Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E, because it doesn't come up right away. But maybe if we get enough sales, we just have to put big kid and it should pop up to the top. Right. Um, so <laughs> what tips? What's the most important tip a parent needs to know? What do, do you need them to know um, about helping their child to um, be as successful as possible? Okay, wow, well, there, there are a lot. So one thing I think <laughs> that we do miss as parents is um, having our children see us read. So when, you know, they're in school or, you know, you know we'll, we'll tell them, oh, you need to read, you need to read, but they, they never see us reading the book. <laughs> You know, so a lot right. of times parents will or kids will they'll do what we do instead of what we say. So that's one of the things that I try to make sure with my son. So when we would go to the library, I would get a book for myself. I would get books for him. So he always knew, oh, that big book, mommy, that's your book. Or if he's playing, um, I would, um, you know, if he's playing with Legos or whatever, I would get a book out and I would read it. And so sometimes he would look at me and he would come up in my lap and say, you know, what is that? And he would point to it. And if it's appropriate, I may read a sentence out of it or tell him what it's about. But I do think, you know, our children need to see us read, you know, because um, they're going to do what we do, not what we say. And, you know, they may not say it to us, but they're going to be thinking, well, you know, you don't read. <laughs> so why should I read? Right. <laughs> they definitely, like, definitely do what we do. Yeah. yeah. You're right about that. Yeah. And well, I'll, 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 go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Please. Oh, um, so. Well, we have. We, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and then I want you to finish this. Okay. So, okay. So this, this would just be the second and last tip. I would just say, um, don't think of it as teaching your child to read or teaching them words. I know that's the name of my book, Teach Your Child to Read Through Play, but um, think of it mm -hmm. as exposure. You, you want to expose them to words and whether that's through experience whether that's you playing with the words, like if you're playing with them, describe what you're doing, whether that's, you know, YouTube. Uh, we used a lot of YouTube where we would dance to songs. I would put the captions up, like um, songs mm -hmm. like head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Um, he was mm -hmm. making connections with that. He could see the words on the captions. We were do actually um, doing the words as far as um, doing the motions for um, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. We're experiencing it. He's seeing it. Um, he's able to feel it on his body. So I would definitely say just think of exposing your child to words, exposing them to the alphabet, not necessarily teaching them. And that way it'll make it more fun for you and them. And that's just exactly what one of the comments um, today was from one of our uh, watchers and listeners said that they kept the closed captioning on their television to teach their child. And I think that's all part of being word, having a word rich environment. So, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So it's easy to do that. Just put the closed captions on and when they're watching cartoons so they can see the words go by. It's like singing to the dancing ball kind of thing with the right. words, you know, with the lyrics, right. I should say. 
Uh, and so now that those are all great tips. I think um, we really need to um, encourage reading. I know it sounds cliche to a lot of parents, like you keep hearing it, oh, read to your child. But I can tell you from experience that that mm -hmm. is the number one best thing to ensure success of your child in school. Right. Because if they can't read by third grade, they're going to be behind. Right. Because they only teach you to read up to third grade. Right. At the third grade, they expect you to read well so you can do all of your work. Right. And if you can't read well, you struggle with right. everything. Right. So giving them that advantage as young as possible mm -hmm. is a good thing. It's right. a good thing. So even though it may sound cliche, it's imperative. It's the most important thing you can do is to teach your child how to read as soon as possible so that is second nature to them. Right. Right. So tell us a little bit about your books before we go. Okay. Um, so the first book is it's called Teach Your Toddler to Read Through Play. And I actually have one with me. Um, I'm on vacation right now, so I forgot, I forgot the other one. But this one here is Teach Your Toddler to Read Through Play. And it has over 130 activities to teach your child to read. So it goes through my story of how, expo how I expose my son to words. Um, it talks about um, audio books, the specific books that we read. It gives you resources for, like, if you want to read a book and then watch the cartoon about it. So they're making connections with those books. It gives you, you information about that. It also tells you what to do if your child loses interest. Um, it also tells you what, um, like, as far as the learning styles, how to tell what uh, type of learning style your child has. Um, so there's a lot of information there and it tells you about how I taught my son phonics, um, sight words, what YouTube videos we watched, what audiobooks we did. And most important, most people forget about the library. Like if I cannot say enough about the public library, because <laughs> I, I really don't buy a lot of books. We just go to the library every week um, and we make our weekly trips to the library. And that's another way to expose your child to books, too. So I talk about how to take advantage of the library. The, um, baby and me programs that they have there, the toddler reading story yeah. time programs that they have there. Um, so everything that you need to teach your child to le to learn to read through play, expose them to words, experience words is, is in this book. Um, the second book that I've written is called Fun and Easy Ways to Teach Your Toddler to Write. Um, so my son was writing the alphabet and also his numbers one through 100 um, by 21 months. And I, it teaches you how to strengthen your child's hands through play, like playing with Play-Doh or um, how to write on vertical surfaces to strengthen their fingers and their wrist. Um, doing playful activities like going outside and uh, writing with sidewalk chalk. Actually how to teach your child to write mm -hmm. uh, letters, but through play and through words. So like if you're writing the letter A, you can describe it as a... Um, a part of a triangle with the line through it, or you can describe it as stick man legs with the line through it. So it teaches you how to use metaphors um, and stories actually to teach your child how to write. And that one also has over 130 activities to teach your child to write as well. So those are my two books so far. And I do have Very one other one coming out soon, probably the beginning of next year. I don't have a title for it, but it's called How to Teach Your Child Financial Literacy in Through Play. Mm. Um, so that one has is going to have over 110 activities to expose your child to um, even mutual funds by playing um, with Play-Doh or real estate by what? playing with Legos. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm that, loving it. Thank you. So that'll come out um, sometime next year. But again, all of these is just exposing your child, not pushing them, but you want to make it in a way that's fun because when they're born, you know, they have curiosity and you just want to um, help them to channel that curiosity, to encourage that curiosity. And also you want to encourage them to just ask, keep asking you questions, too, because um, if in those questions is how you're going to teach your child to read. Because if they ask you a question about a topic, maybe go to the library, get a book on it, watch a video about it, expose them to words within that topic. So that's one way as well. So the, my books just teach you how to connect with your child, bond with your child, and just expose them to reading words and writing in a fun way. Fantastic. Now, you did this all because you became a mom. What? You, but did you have a background in this before you started? Or um, how did you, did yes. you just get so good at it? Oh, that, thank you. <laughs> 
you know, my son has helped me learn like how he learns. So I just kind of go with his flow. But I did have a background. So um, when I was in graduate school, I started an organization that's called Simply Outrageous Youth. And I kind of got the name from my brother because he started an organization with Simply Outrageous. And he used to teach um, him and his wife, Michelle, they used to teach kids financial literacy in school. And so I asked them, you know, could I put the youth on the on the end of that name and make Simply Outrageous Youth? And the way that I pay with, for my living expenses through um, graduate school was to I had a contract with the local public schools there and I would go in after school programs with the masters and business students and teach financial literacy. Um, so and I knew that, you know, kids were in school all day. They were listening to teachers um, lecture all day. So I knew I wanted to do something that was game based. And that was actually mm -hmm. how my brother, uh, my sister in law, my mom, that's how they taught me about financial literacy. They taught me through games and role plays. So I created um, these role plays for kids in the fourth through eighth grade of, about financial literacy. And so that's just my natural way of teaching, um, just from working with those students. And then I also worked for a company called Entrenuity, where we would teach kids business. And it was all through hands-on learning. Um, so they actually had to start their business. So it wasn't theory. It was more like, okay, you're going to start this business and you'll learn your way through it <laughs> just by doing it. So um, that was my background in it. So when I had my son, I was like, okay, well, I know that parents are singing the ABCs, but I just didn't want to sing it to them. I wanted to do it through play. And um, so that that's my background in it. So ever since I would say I was in graduate school, I always taught kids through hands on learning through play. I always wanted them to experience what they were learning. Cause I think that's just the best way to teach kids. So. Okay. <laughs> totally not really off topic, but somewhat. Have you heard the new ABC song? No, wait, wait, is it a video where this girl is singing? Um, no, this it's, it's like it comes up, looks like Play Doh, I think it is, and um, but it's awful, it oh, doesn't really? have any rhythm to oh, it no. at okay. all. And they're trying to change it, I don't know why you would change something that works, yeah. but it's awful. If you get a chance, Google the new ABC, it went viral, it even was on Ellen. That's okay, how awful I didn't it was. See that. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll Google it. I'll yeah, Google so check it out. It is so awful. I just thought I mentioned it because it, it did go viral. It is awful. I want to read the our last comment for today, and then we have to sign off on this great topic. Maybe we'll have you come back once you do your new book and have that out. Just contact us because um, we'll be doing more of these at the beginning of the year. Um, but uh, Tiffany says, "I love this. Word exposure is definitely important." I've been reading to my son since day one, and he's now reading small sight word books on his own. It's super easy to teach him reading and math skills because he's been exposed to so much vocabulary through me simply reading to him daily. Oh, I, I tell that. you guys, oh, I'm going to say it again. This is the key. This is the secret. This is it. This is the secret for kids. Success. Right. If you want to have a successful child have their career successful in school, you need to read to your child from the time they're in their womb. And if you didn't do it, it's still not too late. You know, you really need to teach them as early as possible and make sure they know how to read before third grade. Do it early. Like you said, age zero to three is when the brain is making all those synopsis and connections. And that is the most important time for brain development so that they can pick this up. That's why they can learn languages at such a that young age because their brain is just like a sponge is absorbing all of this stuff. Right. And it's not a bunch of uh, people say, well, it is really true. It is so true. So I can't uh, say that enough, but uh, any last words, Andrea, before we go? Um, yes, one thing I know uh, you mentioned that, you know, it's not too late, like even if your child is older. And I just want to piggyback on the story with Dr. Ben Carson, if anybody has um, read his book, I think it's called Gifted Hands, where he talked about where his mother, that she started making him read. I want to say it was either the third through fifth grade, but, you know, she made them go to the library once a week. They checked out two books. And from that point on, he didn't like reading at first, but then he grew a love for reading. So even if you have children who are older, you know, just keep exposing them, you know, to the library. You know, at first they may not like it, but, you know, get books that interest them. If they like video games, maybe there's some books on those characters. I've seen so many <laughs> books on about video games or um, how to create video games at the library. So anything that they have an interest in, there's probably a book on it. So start there. And then, you know, even if they say they don't like it, just keep exposing them, keep exposing them. And then eventually, you know, 
they will start to have a love for reading, but you gotta be persistent, so. Right, and like we said earlier, get some books that with characters that look like them, main characters look like them. And again, once again, <laughs> get your copy of Big Kid on amazon.com, look for it. That's what the cover looks like, Big Kid, comma Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E. -E. And they'll be able to read to you probably after the first two times you show them this book and read to them and then show them the animation. Like you said, the animations helped your, your son. So the animations have the words that go along with them as well. So I guarantee you after reading this a couple of times and then seeing the animation, they'll be able to read the book back to you anyway. Oh, I do All have, right, one, so, have one other thing. Oh, um, yes, on absolutely. My, uh, on my website, um, for those, I do have the book Teach Your Toddler to Read Through Play, but we also um, have an online course for parents who need I mean, um, more information. So my online course with Teach Your Toddler to Read Through Play, it is based on the books, but you actually see my son I'm learning to read from when he was a baby. You'll see him um, giving me books that I'm telling him to give me the titles to. You'll see him reading as a one-year-old, reading as a two-year-old, him doing sight words. Um, so you will see all that on the online course. If you're interested in that, um, just go to our website and check that out as well. And what is your website? Oh, it's Simply Outrageous Youth, and youth is Y-O-U-T-H dot org. So Simply Outrageous Youth dot org. Okay, I'll put that right. I'll put that okay. up here so you can see it. I did okay. it real fast. Hopefully, I spelled everything. There we go. Yep. All right, there you go. <laughs> All right, and um, you guys can go to her website. Also, um, if you want to see some of these animations for our books, Ethnic Animations on YouTube.com, just look for that. Uh, we also have a successful Black Parenting um, YouTube channel, but our animations specifically will live on Ethnic Animations on YouTube.com. So I want to thank you, Andrea, for coming on our show today and teaching us how to teach our toddlers how to read. Um, so appreciate you. Oh, no, thank you for having me. This was fun. <laughs> And I wanna thank all of you for participating and with your great questions and great comments and listening to Back Talk by Successful Black Parenting Magazine, the podcast talk show for parents. If you missed part of the show, no worries. You can just wait a few minutes and click the replay of this podcast. You can share it with anyone who needs to hear it and let's get the word out. You can also find the audio only on anchor.com, on Spotify, on iTunes, on Android. Google Play, you can find us everywhere. We're everywhere on all the platforms. And our next live episode is Friday, November 15th at 6 p.m. That's Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm gonna bring back Dr. Dorette Norhassan to talk about her newest book, The Fertility Manual. So if you know someone who is struggling to get pregnant, um, they can talk to her live on our show, just like you guys did with comments. So go to our Facebook page at Black Parenting One and sign up for the notification so you don't miss any of our live broadcasts. Be sure to tag any friends in the post and hit the reminder button so that way um, you don't forget to tune in. You can always ask questions live like you guys did today in our chat and Facebook comment session, section. And if your question gets picked, I'll post it live on air. By the way, next Saturday is our last live show for the year. I mean, it's that time of year where the holidays start. So we take a hiatus during the holiday months, but Back Talk will be back mid January. So if you haven't listened to all of our podcasts, this is your time to catch up because we won't be on air after next Saturday. And one more thing don't forget to follow us too on Twitter and Facebook at Black Parenting One. We're at Black Parenting One for the first Black Parenting Magazine in print nationally ever, and on Instagram at Black Parenting Magazine. Our website is SuccessfulBlackParentingMagazine.com. Put that up there so you can see. <laughs> and it is full of good content to help you thrive and not just survive as a parent. Be sure to rate our podcast. And until next time, take care of yourself because you never know when the world will need you. So take care. Bye-bye, guys.